After demonstrating for weeks on end, they've become a threat to the country and the revolution. These are the words of Sudan's military rulers who accuse the protesters of seizing an army vehicle. On Thursday, tens of thousands of demonstrators were still out on the streets and joined that day by hundreds of women demanding that the revolution include all its citizens. Before the revolution, Sudanese women used to experience real suffering, especially the ones who were in remote and marginalized areas, as well as war zones. They were the ones who carried the economic, financial and family burden. We want a civilian government that will guarantee our rights as women and that will guarantee us decent lives as citizens with rights and duties. With the power now in the hands of the military council, protesters demand a rapid transition to civilian rule. Talks have stalled over how many seats the military council and the civilian coalition should each have on the transitional council, which would rule until democratic elections. Strongman President Omar al-Bashir was ousted in April after months of protests. The army seemed to be on their side. It protected demonstrators from security forces and even allowed them to seek shelter in the army HQ in Khartoum. But along with the army's hardened tone, there could also be a hardened stance. The council's latest calls for the protesters to go home comes as it shuts down the Sudanese offices of Qatari broadcaster Al Jazeera.